Hello again. Um, well, we are continuing the um, the understanding of the Old Testament class um, called the Old Testament Made Easy. And um, today is the this is this lesson is the last of the introduction le lessons. We've talked about an an introduction to the Old Testament. We've talked about an introduction to the Bible, and now we're going to talk about an introduction to the land and the people. Um, obviously, this I'll have to skip over a lot of stuff while trying to include the things that is important. Now, um, this is just a map that I got off the internet, um, and it shows uh, first off down here in the bottom left, you can see this this map of the entire world, and you can see that here is Africa. Um, if you can see my my mouse clicker, and um, uh, up here is Europe. Here's India and China over here, and right here is what's called the ancient Near East, or I'm sorry, not ancient, but uh, it's called the Middle East. Uh, it's this sliver right here where, where modern day Israel is, okay? And uh, this right here is, you know, obviously that would be the, the Middle East, Turkey's up here, um, Iraq and Iran and whatnot's in, in here, um, and Saudi Arabia is down there. Uh, so. And that's a, a basic map of, 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 of what's going on. You can see over here, you've got the desert. Uh, you've got Egypt over here with Sahara Desert over here. You can see it's real mountainy up here. And you can see the Persian Gulf here, the Red Sea here, the Mediterranean Sea over here, the Black Sea way up here, um, the Asian Sea over here. So. Uh, this area right here is what's called the Fertile Crescent, crescent in ancient uh, studies. Um, now, Mesopotamia is this area here, going from Sumer through Akkad and Assyria up here. Um, but uh, this right here is just, was just, you know, has many different names: Palestine, Canaan, Israel. Uh, I mean, really, the list goes on. <laughs> it's really had a lot of different names throughout history, um, and then. Uh, I lost my clicker here. There it is. Uh, and then here's Egypt over here with Sinai, Sinai Peninsula. Um, but this area marked in green is what's called the Fertile Crescent. And why it's called that is because it looks kind of like a crescent moon. It's in that crescent, crescent shape. And uh, everything in this area is, is real, uh, you know, real green, real, um, you know, uh, fertile. Obviously the name, the Fertile Crescent. Um, and then you go out of this area and it's just desert. It's, it's really um, very interesting. Um, all this right in here, as you can see, the, the Arabian Desert. Um, it's just amazing how you go from so green in here to just so dead out here. Now, in recent years, though, um, obviously, um, this is now a lot more deserty than it used to be. But in, in ancient times, this whole sliver in here was, was real green. Um, so... Sometimes my computer gets a mind of its own. So the first, um, the first area there is called uh, Mesopotamia, and if you remember on the map, that's over here where, where, where the land of Sumer and Akkad and all that is. Okay, so um, Mesopotamia is what is today Iraq, Iran, Syria, and Lebanon. Okay, mostly, mostly Iraq. Um, it. it this uh, this goes kind of for the whole area in, in, in the Middle East and, and, and the um, Near East. Uh, is it has a very a varied landscape um, and, and very unpredictable weather. I mean, um, at least d during the ancient times, I've never been there, so I don't know if it's still like that today. But in ancient times. Um, it, you know, you went from mountains to desert to green to, you know, I mean, you had all these different things, and it was very unpredictable weather. You know, um, it, w w the water came down. In fact, um, in Susan Wise Bauer's book, um, uh, the ancient, the ancient world, or um, something about the ancient world, I forget, I forget its name, but she makes a comment about. Um, how the water was actually uh, depositing large, um, uh, leaving large salt deposits and making making it slowly um, yield less and less produce for them. I thought that was <laughs> kind of kind of funny. You know, they 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 were irrigating the land and and uh, 
Well, anyways, I'm getting off topic. Um, but anyways, uh, and so you really had to depend on certain times for water, certain certain um, uh, certain ways of living because it was so unpredictable. You know, here in America, in modern day modern world, you know, uh, if the rain doesn't fall, that's okay. You've got wells, you've got city water, you've got something. You know, it, it's not that big of a deal for people now. Um, you know, and, and largely, if, if you don't have the food, you, you go to the store and get it. You know, it's not that big of a deal. But but back then, they didn't have those things. Back then, it was a lot more, you know, um, iffy as to whether you're going to survive. Um, also, and the land was originally inhabited by people called the Sumerians. Um, but then a people group called the Akkadians, which were Semitic, um, your people say the Western Semitic people, um, and they moved in and kind of took over things, and, and they kind of set up different empires throughout you know history. Um, the Assyrians and Babylonians um, came at, at least in large part uh, from uh, Semitic peoples. Um, now in, in Mesopotamia they had the idea of patron deities, and that's that each city had its own its own god that would kind of watch over the the city. And so these cities would kind of have little feuds with each other and, and kind of pit their gods up against each other and stuff like that. Um, and, and how these things got started was, first off, it's interesting to note that they were city-states, okay? They were not like we think of it today, where, where the city is governed by the government, governed by the whole. They had these cities of people that would, that would um, kind of push out from there. Um, and so what happened is, is as the migration, you know, went on, um, family groups and, and, and different, you know, peoples like that would join together and they would form together and then eventually they would grow and form villages and then they would need, you know, someone for protection so they'd get a leader. Um, and then eventually throughout the course of time it would develop into a city um, and then that city would become a power. Like, for instance, um, the city of Ur would fight against, you know, Uruk or Lagash or, you know, one of the others. Um, and, and so they had this idea of the city-states. Um, and historically speaking, Mesopotamia has always been kind of an area of, of the ancient empires. Um, you, you know, the Persians obviously came from across the Zagros Mountains, um, but, I mean, they are still kind of in that area. Uh, Babylon, both the Old Babylon and, and the, and the Neo-Babylonian Empire both came from, obviously, Babylon. Um, Sargon the Great, Hammurabi, um, the Syrians, I mean, you kind of just go down the list and you'll see these empires that constantly are, are building up there. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> in Egypt, um, one, of the, one of the great mysteries uh, is Egypt. It seems that sometime, and we'll get into this in the next lesson, which is talking about prehistory, it seems like sometime after the Garden of Eden, you know, people started spreading out. And uh, well, we will get we'll get back to that when we get to the next lesson, which is prehistory. Um, but anyways, meanwhile in Egypt, um, the, you know you kind of have a, a lot different of a feel. The Nile was the center of, of their life. You know, uh, it was related with with their with their worship, with their with their living. I mean, everything in, in, in the Egyptian kind of uh, cities and stuff revolved around this. Um, and it had a yearly peak, which would give them their uh, their overflow for their for their produce and whatnot, and if the uh, Nile had a had a bad a bad year, let's just say, where they didn't get enough water, um, oftentimes it was associated with either the pharaoh doing something wrong or with the people or something like that. So um, the Egyptian pan had had the idea of the pantheon. Uh, a lot different than the patron deities, which you know obviously there are overlaps. There's always going to be overlaps, but um, I do want to emphasize the difference for this lesson. Um, the pharaoh was seen as, throughout different times, it's hard to say this was the Egyptian pantheon because it did evolve and change so much through the old kingdom, the middle kingdom, the new kingdom, and we'll talk about that in a second. But, um, you know, it did change a lot. Uh, but at some times the pharaoh was considered a god. The sun was sometimes considered a god, you know, the Nile, you know, different things like that. Um, and so they had these different things. Osiris, you know, for instance... Um, Horus, you know, all these different different gods that were kind of in charge of different things. And they, they kind of worshipped, you know, all of them. You know, not really a patron deity so much. You know, there were kind of the ideas of, you know, Horus being over this area of Egypt and, you know, but um, 
you know, throughout history, uh, the Egyptian pantheon has really been pretty flexible and changed a lot throughout history. Um, there, from the oldest of times, there was a rift between the north and south of Egypt, um, which, when this was united together, this was called a kingdom. Okay, and that's where we get the names Old, Middle, and New Kingdom. Um, the Old Kingdom is when, when you know, and I'm not going to talk about like the Scorpion King and all that stuff, but um, when when the Pharaoh was able to unite both the North and the South together, because there there was a lot a lot a big difference uh, between the North and the South. The North, for instance, was more impacted by trade, and they were more progressive. The South was more impacted by you know um, uh, livestock and and very a lot more. I don't know. Conservative is the right word, but I hope that it gets the idea that I'm trying to get across. You know, there was just a, a big difference. Just like in America, there's a big difference between the you know the northern states and the southern states. Um, and I'm not just talking about slavery. I'm talking about all a lot of different things throughout history. You know, um, northern people tend to be more direct, for instance, whereas southern people, the southern you know states tend to be more, you know, um, folk and you know. Um, I don't want to say Hicks. <laughs> I'm, I'm from the Southwest, um, California, so I don't really have anything in that tiff. But um, you know, there they were a lot. They are a lot. You know, different, and it's kind of the same thing with Egypt. Um, and in between the old and middle kingdom, there was a period called. Um, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank now. I know this. Um, but basically, it was a time when when there was once again feud between the different areas of of, of Egypt. Um, and then, uh, again, between the Middle and New Kingdom, the same thing happened. Um, uh, Egypt has natural boundaries. Um, to the to the west is desert. South is pretty much desert and some other stuff. But, I mean, that's kind of far down there. North is the, is the sea. And uh, east is obviously the way to Saudi, uh, the Saudi Peninsula and, and Israel and all that. Or Palestine or Canaan or whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, but they did. It's interesting to note that they did lose superpower status by King Saul. Um, they did have moments of, of glory, moments of uprising, everything. But but they were. It's no longer called you know the New Kingdom or the Middle Kingdom. It's just called Egypt. Um, and they obviously had different times of power, different times of of of, of um, riches and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's annoying me that I'm drawing a blank between what that was called between the different kingdoms. Um, Oh, it'll probably come to me later. Um, but anyways, can't waste all the time on that. So then that takes us to this third area there, which is called, you know, obviously, like I said, it has many different names, Canaan, Palestine, Israel. Um, and, and this area, it's very it's very interesting. You know, we've seen Mesopotamia, the land of, of, of empires. We've seen Egypt, the land of, you know, different time, different things with their with their with their Nile and everything but now we see this land which is kind of just a land stuck in between you know tensions um, and I mean even today it's still stuck in between tensions you know you, you got a lot of different people pulling on the same same plot of land and it's just you know very um, hectic I guess like you could say but in, in 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 Canaan there really was no advanced civilization there was you know a lot of different tribal peoples and whatnot um, there were mixed peoples, mixed religions. There was a lot of different ideas going on. It, there really was no unifying factor. Um, in Mesopotamia, I know at least there were all, a lot of Semitic people crawling or uh, crawling amongst themselves. But in in Canaan, I mean, there were a lot of different peoples. Um, <clears throat> I, it, historically speaking, it, it it was a bridge for which was very important for trading. Um, they um, I mean, if you if you own this land, you know you were gonna be you were gonna be rich, you know. And as a result, um, there was a lot of foreign influence because everybody was traveling through it. Everybody was, you know, it was most convenient because once again, um, um, I, I, I have it on a slide somewhere around here. The land dictated oftentimes how people would travel, and we'll get to that when I get to the highways and whatnot. Uh, but there was a lot of foreign influence. Um, so uh, it's also important to know that people lived near water and food. They didn't just go out and live wherever they wanted. You know, the the effects of the world did dictate how they lived. Um, and also, as we're studying this, remember that they didn't have cars. They didn't have the, the air conditioners. They didn't have Walmart. You know, this was a harsh land. This was this was you know a different world back then. They didn't have these all these unifying factors. All all your nice you know paved roads with 
where, where if you break down or something, you know, people are there to check on you. It, it wasn't like that, you know. They did have some roads that were, you know, nicer, but I mean, I guess it's relative. So these are just some just some pictures that I pulled off the internet. And there's really um, a few different, um, I guess you could say, sections of the land of Israel. Um, the first is called the coastal plain, and as you can see, it's it's very fertile. It's next to the water there, um, and and it's, and it's just very. Uh, it has a slope to it as you go inland, but but it's very very. I guess you could say calm, if I could use a word to describe what it looks like. But then next to that, you have what's called the central mountain range, um, and you can see it, it has a lot of a lot of a lot of height to it. Um, uh, the, the Israel's big mountain, uh, I can't remember, I think it's called um, Haran or, or Hebron, or we'll get to it in a minute, but, but it, it is located in the central mountain range. Um, and you can see it really has a lot of diversity to it. Um, it does have green, but it has a lot of hills to it. As you go farther south, it, it turns less mountainy and more hilly. Um, hilly. Uh, and then as you get far enough south, you get to what's called the Negev, or the Negev. Um, which is it tends to be a little more deserty, um, and and, and kind of like the southern hill slopes, I guess you could say. Um, and then as you go farther, and I'm going, I've been a little bit unclear. If you go um, from uh, west to east, going through the different geographical types of of land in in the land of Israel. Um, so then going one step over coastal plains, you know, central mountain range, and now we get to the Jordan Rift, which you can see has both the Dead Sea and the um, uh, Sea of Galilee. Excuse me, and you can see how it's green there. Got it has mountains on both the east and the west. I shouldn't say mountains. I should say hills, but I guess you could say mountains. I guess it's all relative. Um, and you can just see how how big it is, how how nice it is. This is this is the Dead Sea here, um, and you can see how it's so full of salt deposits that you can literally lie down in it. Um, very very cool. Um, that takes us to the last section I guess you could really get into is called the Transjordanian Highland. And that's after you get past the Sea of Galilee going farther west. I'm sorry, farther east, not west. Um, farther east, um, you get to this. A lot of it is dry and barren, but a lot of it isn't. Um, but it, it, it's basically the hills on the other side of, of you know the River Jordan. So um, the coast, you know, I mentioned this fertile. This is where the where the Philistines set up camp. Um, it's mentioned in, in Genesis 21:32. 32. Um, it says, So they made a covenant uh, at Beersheba and Abimelech, and Fickle, the commander of his army, arose and returned to the land of the Philistines. Um, that being in the Fertile Crescent. And we'll get into that probably more as it's relevant. Um, so then the Central Mountain Range, 9,100 feet. And it's interesting, the Central Mountain Range goes from 900 feet to um, the rift, which is 1275, 1,275 feet below sea level. So you just have this huge, you know, drop off, um, just really amazing, amazing land. Um, but anyways, uh, the Negev that I mentioned is, is mentioned throughout the scripture, and, and it'll, you'll, it'll have either Negev with a B or Negev with a V. Um, just different translations. It's like Hammurabi or Hammurabi. Um, you know, um, I'm not a linguist, so I'll leave that to someone much smarter than me. Um, so Genesis 12:9 says, um, Abram journeyed on, continuing toward the Negev, um, which once again, that's the south. Um, Desert, a lot of it is deserty and hilly and that kind of stuff. Um, so the rift in, in Matthew 3.13 um, is an example of, of where things are going on in the rift. Um, and it says this, Then Jesus arrived from Galilee um, at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. Now that, you know, is in the rift. Um, so uh, that takes us to the Transjordan. Uh, it's more of a plateau, a lot of gorges in, where rivers come down through it. Uh, in fact, I think there's like three or four main river, go river gorges that go through it, uh, but it's really hilly and whatnot. Um, it's subject to nomads coming through because of the, you know, one of the highways that goes along there. Um, a lot less safe, I guess you could say, than um, you know the central mountain range. Um, it's mentioned uh, in 1 Samuel is one place that it's mentioned. Um, First uh, Samuel chapter eleven verse one. 
Uh, now Nahash the Ammonite came up and besieged Jabesh Gilead, which is there. It's it's in the Gilead Mountains there, um, in the northern part of, of uh, Trans the Transjordan. Um, and when it says come up, it literally means come up. It, he went, you know. First off, he went north, but then also he did rise up because once again Jabesh Gilead um, is is there in the in the mountains. Um, let's see. Um, Okay, yeah, and then in uh, Numbers 32, 1 through 6, it details how those, uh, those I guess you could say, two and a half tribes, if you want to be, you know, a stickler, um, wanted to stay in, in the land of Jabesh Gilead, I'm sorry, not in Jabesh Gilead, um, on Transjordan. Uh, now the sons of Reuben and the sons of Gad, an exceedingly large number of lives, uh, had an exceedingly large number of livestock. So when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, uh, that it was indeed a place suitable for livestock. The sons of Gad and the sons of Reuben came and spoke to Moses and Eleazar the priests and to the leaders of the congregation, saying, you know, and it goes on there. Uh, but they basically settled there on the um, uh, east side of, of the Jordan River and all that. Okay, so also it mentions um, throughout the Old Testament, it'll say something like along the lines of from Dan to Beersheba, all of Israel. All of that means is the northernmost to the southern, southernmost. Um, Beersheba was to the extreme south of Israel, and Dan was to the extreme north of Israel. Um, so, you know, it's just saying from northernmost to southernmost. Um, as you can see, geography plays a huge role in the study of the Old Testament. Um, here um, is is another uh, picture of, of, of Palestine. You can see just the different the difference in, in extremeness. You've got the mountains up here. The rift down here, I mean, you can just see there. Here's the coastal plains over here, nice and flat. It's got that slope to it that I was talking about. Here's a central mountain range, which you can see goes a good deal. And then you've got the rift here, very narrow, but very deep. Here's the Dead Sea here, uh, and the Sea of Galilee up here. And then here's the Transjordan, and you can see what I was talking about with it, um, whoops, um, with it hitting this, this desert area here, um, you know, uh, with, with Arabs coming through there. Um, so... Here's just a, 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 a little map of, of, of the highways. Now these red ones are, are the big ones. Uh, this one out here away from the sea is called uh, the King's Highway. You can see how it comes along here. And this one here is called the Via Maris, the Way of the Sea, um, which uh, people would tra you, use more to travel through. Um, like for instance, when Pharaoh came up, he probably took the Via Maris. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, something interesting to note about the highways. Now, now, those two red ones are the main ones. The yellow ones are kind of like smaller roads and whatnot. Um, and, and uh, well, I'll get to that later. Um, so, so something that's kind of important is that the land often dictated travel. You didn't just go wherever. You know, you had livestock and whatnot. You had people with you. Uh, and then the, the land really did dictate how you would travel and, and, and when you would travel and that kind of thing. Um, so the two main ones are the Via Maris, which is the way of the sea, and the King's Highway, which is a caravan, which the caravans used along the desert. Um, kind of just circumnavigates, I guess you'd say, the entire Palestine area, just whoop, right around it. Um, and, and so for this, it's interesting to note that the cities had strategic locations. They weren't just built willy-nilly. They, they, they had a reason for why they put them there. Um, and so Israel had a lot, a lot of different, you know, neighbors. Um, they had the Syrophoenicians, or which is Tyre and Sidon, which is to the northwest of Israel. They had the Arameans, also called the Syrians, also called the people of Damascus, which was to the northeast of Israel. They had the Egyptians, which was to the southwest. And the Hittites, which was to the extreme north, but then also some. It appears that some of them may have been in the land of Canaan as well. They had the Canaanites, which I already said were very mixed. Um, the Jebusites, for instance, were part of the Canaanites. You know, they had all these different different little tribal peoples, and it's it's hard. We, I don't even know if if, if pe historians and whatnot know now who all the different people were there. Uh, but then they had the people of Esau, which were to their um, east and, and, and southeast there. Um, of Esau, there were the Edomites. Um, of Moses, there were the Ishmaelites, the Arabs, and the Midianites, which were, um, some of them were in the Saudi Peninsula, some of them traveled around. You know, some of them uh, settled up in the Mesopotamian area. I mean, there's just a lot of different different people groups and all kind of mi mixing around and whatnot. Um, and then you have, uh, from Lot, you have the Ammonites and the Moabites. Now, the Ammonites, Moabites, and Edomites all lived kind of in the same area, and we'll get to that in just a second. Um, here's a map. You can see Israel here. Uh, Edom was down here. 
south of the Dead Sea right here. Okay. And um, uh, that was Edom. Moab was right. Where did my mouse go? Right here, right north of, of, of Edom. And then Ammon was right here, just north of Moab. Um, and then the Syrophoenicians were over here. You can see Damascus is over here. So that's where the Syrians were, that were the Arameans. Um, Hittites were largely up here, Plateau of Anatolia and whatnot. Um, Egypt's, Egypt was over here, Mesopotamia is over here. The Arab people are both down in here and over in here. But uh, that kind of sums up what what, uh, what the land of the people were like. Um, I know it's a very brief, um, very brief study there. There's a lot more you could get into, but I, I hope that that was that, that gave you just a, a good summation of what was going on at the time of the Old Testament. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, I know I have all these question slides. If you have any questions, leave them in, as comments in the comment section of the YouTube um, uh, video, and I will try to respond to them if I can. Um, next section, we'll be talking about. Uh, prehistory with Genesis and Job. Um, so I hope you learned something and I'll see you next session.